Today, we're going to a truck demolition derby, and you won't believe just how much abuse a truck can take. Then it's back to the shop to show you all the secrets that make these derby trucks so tough. It's all today, here on Trucks. Hey, welcome to Trucks. Well, people found out we're doing a derby truck on the show, so they called some people who called some other people, and our phone was ringing off the hook over the weekend. We found out they were running a derby over here at Ashland City, and the reason we showed up is... Well, it's right here. These boys are going to tear some trucks up. Let's check it out. Now, there's lots of fun to be had at the county fair, but the thrill ride we're here for takes place on a field of mud and dirt. People come from miles away to enter these demolition derbies. And truck derbies are getting more and more popular, with the full-size cars becoming harder to find and more expensive. Whoops. There are no rules for styling, so the teams get to show some personality when it comes to paint. And there's always a bit of last-minute prep to do in the pits before the race. Oh, great. That wasn't even hard. Oh, some hammer there. And just like every form of racing, tech inspection is mandatory. Not only to make sure nobody's cheating, but also for safety. To bolt the cab down, make sure the battery box is in its position of where we say it should be, and bolt it down securely. Also for the fuel tank, supposed to be behind the cab, right in the main of the box, up front. Mainly just safety and not adding any metal, and we just want to have a good show and have a lot of fun. Yeah. This ignition looks like a mess, but an ignition switch can fail. Two wires stuck together is dependable, and it's only 12 volts. Here's a little tip some of the guys use. It's pretty simple. All it is is duct tape wrapped around the U-joints. What that does is that keeps the U-joint cups from just slinging out. A roll cage is a must, and these guys don't play. Solid steel I-beams are common, and like you're about to see, a derby gets rough. With everybody getting ready in the pits, we got the chance to talk with a couple of the drivers. There's nothing that compares to driving on that track. I've done a lot in life, a whole lot of life, fun, but there's nothing more exciting than driving on that track. As our modern day gladiators enter the arena, the gloves are off and everyone knows it. This is a fight to the finish and the last truck movie will take home the coveted Trucks TV Gearhead Three, Trophy. Two, one. It's not total chaos, though. The officials have a keen eye for trouble. With everyone safe, it's back to business. Carnage is everywhere, and it comes down to a standoff between these two survivors. Down to these two. axles, superheated engines, cooked transmissions, body parts everywhere. It's amazing that these trucks even still move. And at last, a champion rises from the wreckage. Hard hit, no. Hard hit. Well, how did that feel, man? That was awesome, man. That's what it's all about <laughs> right here. We're in it for the adrenaline and for the fans, sorry. It looked like a good time, man. Oh, you awesome. run a truck before? This is my third time. Same oh, cool. truck. Well, on behalf of all of us, we want to present you with the Truck CV right. Trophy. 
Oh, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. That sucker's real right Put that there. in the rear frame rail of the next right. truck or something. <laughs> That's nice. That's awesome right there. Yeah. Thank right. you, guys. Thanks for putting on the show, man. Right. Congratulations, man. Yep. I have spent my whole adult life learning how to fix these things. This was beautiful. This was therapy, man. This is awesome. I can't believe it. Stop it. Ah! That's a bad job, man. What happened to your steering? I don't know. It just broke. I, don't I, know. I hit him. It just broke all of a sudden. Yeah, I saw it moving a little, uh, little wampus there. <laughs> now we got quarter-inch plate steel tying the bed to the cab corner right here into the door. It just sheared it away, just completely ripped it out. Amazing force is applied with this stuff. It's a lesson in physics. It's been. <laughs> Check your cage out. Cage broke. <laughs> well, the only Ford in the mix is getting towed out by <laughs> by some road making equipment, but hey, he gave it an honest shot. Old 360 held up real well, but he broke his thumb trying to steer it out of our wreck. Awesome, these guys are just bulletproof. Stick around, because when we come back, we're building our own derby truck. <laughs> Those guys are nuts. Hey, welcome back to Trucks. Well, the truth is some of those derby drivers might be a little on the edge, but there's method to their madness because the guys that win bring home some pretty good money. So if you've ever wanted to get involved in a motorsport on a grassroots level with a minimal investment that pegs the fun meter and with a payout at the end of it, maybe Demolition Derby is something you want to try. Now, we talked to a bunch of those guys, so between what we already know and what we found out, we're going to pass on a bunch of insider information to you guys. For instance, how to build an engine that's going to survive under extreme temperatures. Like half of those guys run in the heat, finishing it without even a radiator working. That and a whole lot more demolition derby tech. We found our truck has a not so solid, not so complete 79 Chevrolet that quite frankly was worth more as scrap than it was as a used truck. Now there's still a ton of work to be done, but we've already gotten a head start by pulling the bed off, the gas tank is off, the interior is completely stripped out, all the glass is gone, the dash has been cut out, and the drivetrain was already missing. We've also unbolted the body and taken the bushings out. This thing's ready to be prepped for a derby now. Now every derby's got its own set of rules, and we don't want any violations to keep us from running, but you and I both know rules were designed to be bent. Now, we're not in any danger of breaking rules, plating up the door gaps. This is a common practice and is accepted by tech inspectors. The biggest reason, other than reinforcing the body a little, is to keep the doors closed and from coming off in a battle. The universal rule of demolition derby is that under no circumstances do you ever hit the driver's door of another vehicle intentionally. Even so, accidents happen. Heck, the whole derby is one big collision. And this plating will help protect the driver, as well as the reinforcement that goes on inside the cab a little later on. Just like we did to the door, we're going to weld the bed to the back of the cab using 16 gauge sheet metal. And then later, bolt the bed to the back of the cab. We're cutting our metal strips from a sheet of 16 gauge sheet metal. You can have your metal supply shear it into strips for you for a small fee, or just use the tools you got on hand. If you're using a plasma torch, a guide clamped to your metal will give you a clean, straight cut. Another benefit of building a derby truck is that it's excellent welding practice. You can experiment with settings, and you can practice laying down several different types of weld without a lot of pressure. Plating the bed to the cab is just not enough reinforcement. Bolting the cab to the bed panel and then again to the frame will help keep your vehicle from separating from the frame or blowing apart. Now in the back, we don't want to put this original bumper back on. The reason being is because if we get locked up with another vehicle and the bumpers hung up together, well, we're done. But we still want some protection. Now here is where you can interpret the rules, maybe twist them a little bit, and still not break them. For instance, we can take some of the diamond plate out of the top of the bumper, we can put it under the rail, fold it up, tie the bed to the frame. And we're not breaking the rules by adding metal that wasn't already there. This is part of the original bumper, so it's all in how you look at the rule book.
Now remember, in Demolition Derby, the back end is the business end of your vehicle, especially with this truck. But unlike the original bumper, we definitely want to put the tailgate back in. The difference is we're relocating it downward and we're going to solid weld it front and rear and across the back. Then we're going to take our bumper plates, wrap them up there, and that hopefully will keep this thing from blowing apart. We used the hot wrench instead of drilling holes just because it's faster and worked over our industrial depot bins using high quality hardware to secure the quarter inch plate. Larger plates spread the load out and will increase the clamping strength. And believe me, like we showed you a while ago, you are going to need it. After the break, we'll show you some tricks and tips from a true Derby Insider. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We'll check out our battering ram now. What we've done in the corners is plate our taillights and tied the bedside into the tailgate. But we've used the same gauge sheet metal here, so technically we're not breaking rules by adding reinforcement. Here, we've seam welded the bottom of the tailgate for strength and taken our bumper plates, welded them solid to the frame rail, wrapped it up around, and welded it solid to the end of the gate. Now, a few simple tricks like this will give the business end of your derby machine a lot more strength. Now up front, we're pretty much going to leave it stock. Out back, a little different story. Now this is our truck stock 10 bolt axle. Now the problem with it, it uses C-clips to retain the axle. What happens is the axle breaks around here. This part stays in the housing, this part slides out, and you lose a wheel. So a smart change is to the Ford 9 inch, where these four bolts will hold the axle in, broken or not. Now you can still break an axle right behind the flange, and if that happens, it doesn't matter which axle you're using, you're still going to lose a wheel. Now, some guys just run a stock drive shaft when they're derbying, but you talk to some veterans and they've got a few tricks up their sleeve here as well. For instance, this shaft is out of one of Tommy's cars. It features this agricultural PTO center section, which you can pick up at your local farm supply store. Now, the basic philosophy is that your car is going to accordion at the track or compress. Well, this thing gives you an additional nearly 30 inches of slip travel and these heavy duty u-joints are quite obviously stronger than the stalkers plus the fact that they give you almost 60 degrees of angle without binding and that my friends will give you a serious advantage now our truck came with a small block 305 so a rebuilt and modified 350 like this one will not only drop right in It'll also give you an edge over the competition. This engine has a typical 40 thousandths overbore with flat top pistons. It's got an Edelbrock performer cam and bone stock heads. The valve stem seals have been removed to help with oil drain back and valve stem lubrication at higher temperatures. It's also got a high volume oil pump, again, to help with heat dissipation. It turns out a respectable 240 horsepower and an impressive 342 foot-pounds of torque. Now up top, we've got an HEI distributor and an Excel coil for reliability and an old-style cast iron two-barrel manifold. But here, Tommy believes that giving the coolant the ability to go straight to the water neck helps with cooling big time. So he bypasses every engine he builds with tapped water jackets that lead right into the thermostat housing where the T-STAT has been gutted, so it still acts like a slight restrictor, but eliminates the possibility of thermostat lockup. Now another common derby mod is these DEC headers, and they make headers for all kinds of off-road applications. These are forward dump style with a long four into one collector and are designed, like everything else, to evacuate heat from the engine bay. But we had our ceramic coated by our buddies at Nitro Plate, and with claims of up to a 20% drop in ambient air temps under the hood, well, it just gives you one more advantage over the rest of the field. Now, this may look like a stock Turbo 400, but that's where it ends, because the guys at State Line Transmissions have done some serious internal magic with this thing. It's got machined pistons to accept more clutches, which distributes the workload over a larger area, thereby it works less and stays in effect longer. In fact, with all the clutch material burned off, this thing will still pull. It's also got a recalibrated valve body for extreme duty, and 98% of the internal plastic parts, shims, and retainers have all been replaced with metal, again, to last longer under intense heat. 
The front pump is converted to full-time lube, again, for better heat dissipation and better lubrication. And they recommend a stock one-ton truck torque converter that stalls about 1,400 RPM. And again, this ties right into our engine and is going to start making torque. Now, you can buy and modify an aftermarket shifter, or if you've got time on your hands, you could even make one. But ours comes from MOP Derby Products. It costs less than 150 bucks, and it features this part gear lockup pin. It's going to keep you out of trouble while you're doing battle. Now, this is pretty heavy duty, but one of the things that makes it particularly nice for a truck is because it's got a tall shifter. Up next, we'll get our derby truck rolling on all fours. Stick around. Hey, welcome back to Trucks, and thanks for hanging around. Because in a couple of minutes, well, we're going to find out what this beast is going to look like. Now, a tire failure can cost you the derby. So what a lot of guys run are these heavy-duty bias ply truck tires with a tube. Now, since the front just acts as a rudder, we've got a tall sidewall and a narrow, skinny tread pattern. But the back, we've got an aggressive pattern with a lot of space between the lugs so we get good traction, whatever the weather conditions are. And right here, you'll notice that we protected the valve stem with some bolts that we got from our buddies at Industrial Depot. Maybe not the politically correct way to use grade five hardware, but it's gonna help us. Now, there's still a lot more to be done. We've got a simple perimeter cage to go around the driver. We've got to mount the fuel cell and the battery. But hopefully this has inspired you guys to grab that piece of junk in your backyard and turn it into something. It's big time fun, and you might make a few bucks at it. Hey, don't scratch the paint. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Now, I know you've seen these Scott shop towels all over the place. Well, they're made by Kimberly Clark, who also makes a ton of other products that are really handy to have around the shop. For instance, these heavy-duty filter masks with two straps and this breathable valve that makes sure the seal stays on your face. They've got these grip gloves that are nitro-coated so you can hang onto your tools and heavy-duty coveralls to keep the contamination off your clothing. Kimberly Clark has several different options for shop towels, and unlike fabric laundered shop towels, they will never have contamination, wax, oil, grease, even metal shavings, which can cost you time and money. The red wipe all towels, well, they're as strong as fabric and are perfectly clean every single time. Now, for any questions on these products or anything that you've seen on our shows, go to powerblocktv.com. Thank you for watching. See you next week.